Here are some quick questions to help you test your knowledge for Edexcel GCSE Chemistry Paper 2. If you haven't seen the full video going through everything you need to know for the paper, it's worth watching that first. Link in description. Let's go. And don't forget to check out the Science Shorts app to help you test your knowledge. Let's go. What three things can you change to increase the rate of a reaction? You can increase the surface area for solids, concentration for solutions, or pressure for gases. This causes particles to collide more frequently. You can also increase the temperature of the reaction. The particles have more kinetic energy, and so not only collide more frequently, but they're also more likely to collide successfully and react. You can also use a catalyst, a substance that isn't used up in a reaction, but it reduces the activation energy required for particles to react, which means again they're more likely to react when they collide, increasing the rate of reaction. How do you calculate rate of reaction from a graph, and how can you find the time taken for the reaction to complete? The gradients of this graph gives you the rate. As this line is usually a curve, you might have to draw a tangent at a certain time and find its gradient to get the rate. It's calculated by change in y divided by change in x, but remember that any rate is change in something divided by time, some things per second, so you know it's going to be whatever's on the y-axis divided by time. What are hydrocarbons, alkanes and alkenes, and what are the different fractions made from fractional distillation of crude oil? Hydrocarbons are organic molecules that only contain carbon and hydrogen atoms. Alkanes are hydrocarbons that only have single covalent bonds between carbon atoms. Alkenes have a double covalent bond between carbon atoms. The way I remember it is that alkene has a double E, so that's a double bond. Crude oil is a mixture of different length alkanes. This is heated at the bottom of the fractionating column, vaporized into gas, and they rise up the column. Then they recondense back into liquid at different heights due to the fact that it gets colder up the column. Shorter chains like LPG or refinery gases end up coming out of the top. This is because shorter chains have lower boiling points due to the weaker intermolecular forces between them. What are the general word equations for complete and incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons? Complete combustion happens when there's plenty of oxygen available. The hydrocarbon or any fuel reacts with oxygen to make water and carbon dioxide. Incomplete combustion occurs when there's less oxygen available. In this case, it's not carbon dioxide that's made, but carbon monoxide, which is poisonous, or even just carbon, that's soot. What's the test for alkenes? Alkenes will turn bromine water from orange to colourless. Remember, we don't say clear. This is because the bromine atoms bond to the alkene to make a bromoalkane, which is colourless. What happens when water reacts with an alkene? It makes an alcohol. The H and OH from the water bond to the hydrocarbon to give that OH group. That's a hydroxyl functional group. If there's nothing else special going on nearby, that means it's an alcohol. If an alcohol is oxidized, what does it produce? And what would ethanol become? When an alcohol is oxidized, oxygen is added to change the functional group to COOH, with the added oxygen double bonded to the carbon. This is now a carboxyl functional group, which indicates we now have a carboxylic acid. The one made from ethanol we call ethanoic acid. That's vinegar, by the way. What are the conditions needed for cracking, and what does the cracking of an alkane always produce? You need either a temperature of around 550 degrees Celsius and a zeolite catalyst for catalytic cracking, or just a higher temperature of more than 800 degrees for steam cracking. Cracking always produces a shorter alkane and an alkene. There aren't enough hydrogens to make two alkanes. What would the polymer made from the addition polymerization of propene be? All we do is break the double bond and put bonds coming out of brackets and an end to show that this unit repeats. The monomer is propene, so the polymer is just called polypropene. This one's also sometimes called polypropylene though, but that's not important. How do you make an ester? You make an ester by reacting a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. For example, ethanol and ethanoic acid makes ethyl ethanoate. 
and H and OH are kicked out, so water is also produced from the reaction. What kind of monomers are needed for condensation polymerization? You need two different types of monomers that have functional groups on both sides of the molecule. For example, an alcohol with two OH groups and a carboxylic acid with two COOH groups. The reaction from the previous question to make an ester happens on both ends of these molecules to make a polymer. This would be a polyester in this case. Again, water is kicked out, hence condensation polymerization. What polymers are made from amino acids, glucose and beta-glucose? Amino acids, they contain an amino functional group, NH2, and a carboxyl group, COOH. They can be polymerized into polypeptides, which are then used to make proteins. Glucose is made into starch, and beta-glucose is used to make cellulose. What colors do you get for the flame test done with these five metals? Lithium gives a crimson flame, sodium yellow, potassium lilac, calcium orange red, and copper green. How do you test for these metal ions in solution? You add sodium hydroxide, which makes a metal hydroxide, and that's a colored precipitate. Aluminium, calcium, and magnesium all make white precipitates. Copper ions cause a blue precipitate to form. Iron two ions result in a green precipitate, while iron three ions make a brown precipitate. How do you test for carbonates, halides, and sulfates in solution? Carbonates react with acid to produce carbon dioxide. To test for halide ions, add silver nitrate and nitric acid. They'll form colored precipitates, chloride white, bromide cream, iodide yellow. Sulfate ions will cause a white precipitate to form when mixed with barium chloride and hydrochloric acid. What are the tests for hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and chlorine? A lit splint will cause a test tube of hydrogen to produce a squeaky pop. Oxygen will relight a glowing splint. Carbon dioxide will cause lime water to go cloudy when bubbled through it. And chlorine bleaches blue litmus paper. It'll turn it white. Give four atmospheric pollutants and the issues they can cause. We've already seen carbon monoxide is poisonous. Sulfur dioxide causes acid rain, which corrodes metal and erodes stone. Nitrogen oxides can cause respiratory problems, and carbon particulates, or soot, can cause various health issues. What kind of reaction does this energy profile represent, and what does that mean about the temperature of the reaction? This is an exothermic reaction. That's because the y-axis is technically potential energy. As that's decreasing, that means the kinetic energy must be increasing. So that means that the temperature of the reaction must be getting hotter. If the total bond energies of the reactants in a reaction are more than that of the products, what kind of reaction is this? More energy is required to break the bonds than is released when the new ones form. So that's net energy into the reaction. Therefore, this is an endothermic reaction. How is potable water made from fresh water and salt water? Fresh water can be filtered to remove large insoluble particles, then sterilized using chlorine, ozone, or UV. You must remove salt from salt water before it's safe to drink, and this is desalination. You can use distillation or reverse osmosis to do this. Both of these require a lot of energy, however. What happens when iron, copper, and aluminium corrode, and how can this be avoided? Iron corrodes when it reacts with oxygen and water. This is also called rusting in iron's case. This makes iron oxide, which is brown. Copper reacts with oxygen, making copper oxide, which is green. Similarly, aluminium oxide is white. Using a sacrificial metal that's more reactive can reduce corrosion as it corrodes before the metal it's protecting. Zinc is an example of this. We call doing this with zinc galvanizing. Why are alloys stronger than pure metals?
Alloys are stronger because the different size atoms disrupt the lattice, the pattern, making it harder for the layers to slide past each other. Same goes for you triple people, leave a like and a comment if you found this helpful. All the best with your exam, I'll see you next time.